Welcome to the Nerdstalker podcast. I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerdstalker on Twitter. And I'm Greg Valoria at Social Greg on Twitter. Hey, man, how's it going? Hey, all right. Happy post Halloween. <laughs> oh, yeah. And almost, I saw uh, some of your exploits. <laughs> almost Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, wow, you have something to announce here, which I think is. Uh, it kind of shocked me when I saw it first, but I think we should do this. Yeah, so, yeah. Starting kind of on a serious note here, uh, Technorati's been reaching out to everyone and you know the on the internet and uh, in social media, asking them to speak about this. So I, I thought we would we'd mention this. Uh, an employee of theirs named uh, Tracy Williams went missing on uh, November second. Uh, mm-hmm. Tracy was last seen at seven forty-five p.m. on uh, Wednesday evening at the White House White Horse Bar, excuse me, located here in San Francisco. Tracy is mm-hmm. forty years old, uh, dark wavy hair. Uh, she she usually wears a bag and a ponytail, prominent freckles on her face, brown eyes, light brown skin, athletic build, 5'8", inches tall, approximately 135 pounds, was wearing blue jeans, a black hoodie, and carrying a small bag. Uh, they're urging you to uh, help them locate Tracy. If you have any information about Tracy, please contact the Santa Francisco Police Department at uh, 415-553-0123, and please reference case number 1108 nine two five four one and please use all the <coughs> social media channels to uh, circulate this news they also have a they just announced they have a facebook page now for this whole thing i'm sure you could google it or just go to technorati and you'll find information about that so i just wanted to get that that uh, out there you know both greg and myself want to mention this yeah on to the tech yes news. um well. so what, what do we got here we got the our iphone 4s a whole bunch of uh info that you got huh there's all kinds of uh yeah clamorings. well you know a lot of people are complaining that after the first couple of days, I, I've seen some posts, uh, you know, ser- uh, c- uh, customer service posts, some tweets and stuff about the uh, iPhone 4S battery life. You know, I think it's supposed to be well over 300 hours standby. Mm-hmm. You know, people are saying, you know, they can't even get through an eight hour day with their phone. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, apparently, um, Apple has narrowed it down, um, uh, you know, looking at some of the posts from PC World and uh, a couple other uh, players there. Uh, uh, Live Hacker, I think, uh, was also announcing the same thing that, you know, it, it'll, it, it looks like in two weeks they'll have they'll have a software fix. So obviously it's a software related issue. It isn't hardware. That's good news. Um, so, uh, yeah. So that's a good thing. You know, it. Uh, with that antenna thing the last time, that wasn't really too fun. So, yeah. um, you know, the battery life thing was really kind of surprising. So, um, there, I think, uh, in our, in, in your post on the website, we also have some battery saving tips, uh, from, um, from a couple sources that we found, uh, I, I, iPhone stuff for you, uh, has some uh, battery saving tips in case you have an iPhone 4S that you want to kind of turn off certain things. Like, uh, one of the suggestions, and, and it's true with any phone, is kind of like turn off vibrate for alerts. Yeah. Um, that has a drain on battery life. That's been known on Androids for a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, all the GPS yeah, location stuff just sucks your, uh, you know. <laughs> You leave Wi-Fi on, uh, it sucks your battery down. Um, yeah, battery technology yeah. on cell phones still, um, let's face it, it blows. I've never experienced anything as good as an iPad. I mean, that thing is just out of the stratosphere. I've heard great things about the Air as well. Um, but mm. it seems like phones in general, man. You know, if you really push, you push it, you're going you're gonna to pay for it <laughs> in, yeah. in terms of battery yeah, life. I- so that's about it for those battery tips. So like I said we'll put that uh, battery saving tips on on the website. But uh, what's this thing about uh, limited data plans? You need to watch their Siri usage. Siri usage, what's... yeah. So Jason Chen from Lifehacker reports: uh, if you got a low level data plan, say like AT and T's, uh, where you only mm. get 200 megabytes per month, uh, you should be careful. Yeah. Our Technica ran some tests and found that if you use it like 10 to 15 times a day, uh, you're going to use about 27 megabytes a month. So that could add up relatively quickly. So I know some people have limited data plans, and uh, a lot of these plans are starting to cap and stuff too. So if you are an intense user of Siri, the problem, the I wouldn't say the problem, the, pro- uh, the issue with a lot of these voice recognition things is that you talk in the phone, you don't realize it, but your voice is going up to the mothership they're doing their work on it, and it's coming back down oh, to you. So there's yeah. a there's an actual request, a back and forth request kind of thing happening. Right. So that's you know, true. That's data. That's very true. That's yeah, data. Yeah. I mean, we love the cloud, but it has some it has some issues. It has yeah. It has some trade offs with that, right? So you've been warned, so, people. You've been warned. 
<clears throat> oh man, wow, that that's a pretty good catch. So so um, Yahoo is into alcohol and cocktails. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So be, a lot of people don't know this, but like they, you know, Yahoo's, you know, the whipping boy. I think of technology besides HP here. Uh, f- for the sake of the the employees themselves, there's an amazing gem within Yahoo called YUI, the YUI team. Uh, and, the, mm. and what they are, they're incredible engineers and developers, and they create all these amazing tools and technologies for web development kind of stuff and development in general. Mm. And they're super talented. It's it's amazing they can retain these people, uh, the people that they have retained, uh, because they put out incredible products. And these are a couple of the things that they just announced out of, you know, out of nowhere after all this. Um, they actually had an event, uh, but something uh, called Cocktails. Yeah, and uh, Cocktails is essentially a mix of HTML5, uh, Node.js, uh, CSS3, and JavaScript. And uh, one of the products is uh, something they're calling Mojito. And uh, Mojito is a JavaScript web application framework that makes your stuff run on both sides. So essentially, it's, it can run on both the browser side and the server side. Now this wow. is this is huge, you know, it's super geeky techy stuff that people don't realize, but this is like a huge type of a uh, uh technology. Uh with Mojito, developers no longer have to write different code for the server back end and the browser front end. Uh not only that, but going wow. forward there should be no more warnings on web pages whatsoever about uh needing JavaScript uh enabled is required. Uh, since whenever mm. JavaScript is not enabled in the browser, Mojito-based applications will still run on the server side, all using a single code base. Uh, so remember, wow. on the server side, you'd have to use things like you know Ruby, PHP, or whatever to make it mm. make right, it all right, good. Right, versus right. the client side, which could be you know, <clears throat> HTML, JavaScript. Now, uh, it's just one you know just one language. Yeah. You don't need any of this Ruby, PHP stuff. You can just write normal front end type of stuff, and you know, and they and it'll work on both ends. Uh, not only that. Um, they have something else called Manhattan. Yahoo Manhattan is a server-side JavaScript hosting environment for Mojito-based applications running on Yahoo's cloud. Manhattan mm. extends Node.js for easy deployment, so super easy for developers to package and deploy uh, applications. This stuff will run all over the place. Every device. We're talking mobile, web, you know, whatever, div- multiple devices, um, graceful degradation. That means if you don't support certain stuff, it'll look, you know, uh, progressive enhancement and it'll look nicer hmm. too as, as your stuff is more in hardware enabled and stuff like that. So this is very, very exciting technology. And I think it's uh, a lot of the media and people have just, and technology news have really missed it on this one. Um, it's one of those hidden type of stories that is big news. So what's this, Greg? Kids with smartphones, and what's the right age? Well, you know, we always talk. I I think you and I, you know, because you know we're parents, we 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 have something about education, tech, and education, and stuff like that. So we always have something like that. And you know, this is something that I think all parents kind of struggle with. Is so uh, Kevin Toffel of uh, Gigom, who wrote uh, a piece that went into the New York Times this weekend, you know. uh, wrote an article about you know kids with smartphones. What's the right age? Um, so uh, this poll by Sodahead you know, of about you know over a thousand parents showed that 66% of them believe kids shouldn't have a smartphone until they were 16 years old. Uh, more than half, 54%, has said a regular cell phone is fine from 13 to 15, which is kind of like middle school, you know, early early high school. Um, and then nearly a quarter of those poll felt that. Those kids under 12 should just have a basic handset. I, I, you know, I think, you know, my my son kind of followed the same kind of uh, path. So, um, I probably tend to agree with that. Um, yeah, those seem fact, to be like the numbers that I've heard too. Something like that, like 12 year old is is about when they start getting their cell phones or something like that, which is mind blowing. But I totally understand <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, in my in my in my one of my son's classes, like in third or fourth grade, uh, some some kids had like basic handsets already. So wow. it was just it was just crazy, yeah, yeah. It, it crazy. But um, you know, I, in a related article, I you know I, I was starting to get really interested. Is that you know what is the debate of really you know what is the right age to give kids a cell phone? Period. Yeah. So um, there was this article on MSNBC, MSN.com. Um, talking about that, and it, and it seems to be, and, and I, I agree with this that it really is a parent's choice. It depends. It, it really isn't a 
personality thing or you know yeah. um, maturity thing it's really practicality is what they were saying in this article it's like you know if you need to get a hold of your kid or your kid needs yeah, to call sure. you after they get out of school then that's the practicality of having a cell phone you know it's a communication device after after all right I right, mean, right um and and that's what it's more from a child safety, family safety type yeah, of thing sure. is what yeah. most of the parents say. Yeah. I don't know. What's your thought on that? Well, like, yeah, as as you mentioned, there's there are pros and cons, one of which is, let's face it, the cell phone is essentially a GPS, right, for parents, which is great, right? You can literally track them yeah. now. Uh, and yes. also you could call them and say, hey, where you're at, you know, and have that right. type of uh, important type of conversation. Obviously, if there's an issue for them, like they're stranded somewhere, broken down the car or, or something like that, obviously, or my broke down yeah. my little bicycle or something, uh, come yeah, get yeah. me, dad, or whatever, then that's yeah, important, yeah. too. At the same time, you hear about these teachers having to collect cell phones before the kids go into class, you know, into classrooms, uh, because that, I'm sure that can <laughs> cause all kinds of distractions, you know. So, yeah, it's I'm, I'm yeah. torn. I, I think I'd rather give the kid the phone, actually, myself, being a parent, but... That's me. Yeah, yeah. Again, I think it's all personal decisions. But I thought this was kind of kind of cool because you know I, I don't think many tech channels um, talk about these type of practical issues. These are very practical. Yeah, you yeah, know? And yeah. When I saw, and when I saw that article and obviously I made it to New York Times, it is a, it is a subject uh, you know around the country that most parents struggle with. You yeah. know, you know. And in fact, uh, you know, I think I even read in one of the articles that. Um, actually, you know, iPads. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them feel that iPads are are, are more useful for the kids at age of 16 yeah. than, a, than a cell phone is. Mm. And, uh, yeah, that, that that has some credence. That yeah. argument has some sure. credence as well. Sure, so, sure. From an information device standpoint, and music and everything else, media device. So mm -hmm. it's all good. Cool. So. Yeah, let's go on. Speaking the, of kids. The sods yeah. must be crazy. The sods must be crazy, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah. you remember the one laptop per child uh, program? Um, this was uh, oh. introduced, I think, quite quite a time, quite a ways back, and it was like a little green plastic-looking laptop with these antenna things that we were oh, supposed yeah, to give away yeah, yeah. to uh, uh, to third-world countries and, and, <clears throat> and really gnarly type of areas, you know, where there is no power or electricity and this mm. thing has to be super durable. Mm. Well, uh, Ryan Paul from Ars Technica uh, reported that the One Laptop Per Child project, or OLPC as they're known, uh, has devised a bizarre plan for deploying its new X03 tablet. Uh, the organization plans to drop the touchscreen computers from helicopters near remote uh, villages in developing <laughs> countries. The, de okay. the device will then be abandoned and left for the villagers to find, distribu distribute, support, and use on their own. Um, yeah, so this is like a true story, you know? Uh, and, and, you know, this uh, these guys at uh, oh, the OLPC project, One Laptop Per Child project, have had all kinds of drama in the past with this laptop thing, and I think Dell was, or decided to do their own also, or someone did. And, um, and they had uh, this new uh, design for this new super flat tablet, you know, that they were going to make like at $75 was their goal to make it manufactured at that. They couldn't do that. They partnered with Marvel, a company called Marvel, and uh, just did a, did their form factor type of a tablet. Uh, supposedly, it has like solar cells so that it, you can charge the battery um, mm. of this tablet. Mm. Um but uh, people are, you know, saying, well, you know, this is kind of a neat sort of idea and publicity stunt possibly, um, but it's going to happen. And, and uh, there's also, you know, th when they land, are, are they going to break? Are they going to be functional? Um, that kind of thing. So, you know, I guess, I, I don't know, I guess something's better than nothing, you know, in one mm. respect, but in the other, you read this and you're like, wow, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah well, so. I, the, the. Yeah, you know, I some of the things that come through my mind when I when I read that uh, earlier and then just thinking about what you just said earlier mm -hmm. was that you know um you know usage um are 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 they really going to be able to use it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I is is there a cell tower near them or yeah, something? Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know. Questions. You know Lots of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We shall yeah, see. We was, shall see how it works thought, out. I hope it happens. I really want to see what happens. Point. That's an interesting uh, experiment. Yeah, so we'll see. So sp speaking I mean, of uh, interesting experiments, though, uh, yeah. what about this uh, group on IPO? <laughs> speaking of crazy oh, plans, too. Huh? Oh, geez. Hey, they, 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 ro they rose $700 million yeah. on Friday, yeah, so yeah. I guess they can't be that crazy. You yeah, know, I think yeah. they're, 
there was a lot of drama this year on, on Groupon with some of the accounting practices mm-hmm. that they were mm-hmm. doing and you know and then basically the CEO uh, the begging mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> people to it was now is very rich <laughs> yeah yeah which yeah. I, I think it worked it out off. pretty well oh yeah yeah <laughs> you know capitalism um, <laughs> But they're the, you know, you know, they said, uh, you know, uh, they said that this is the second uh, largest IPO by a U.S. internet company since Google in 2004 that raised 1.7 billion. So, wow. you know, you know, I think people are 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 in love with tech right now, mm-hmm. and you know, it looks like, you know, I think also if you think about it, maybe if it was undervalued, maybe there are a lot of investors that said Man, it might be a good deal. Let's just put some money in, see where it goes. You know. Yeah, I, I think um, my take in my take is like a lot of the professional investors were like, we're going to buy early and we're going to sell it that night. You know, kind of thing. we're in and we're out, <laughs> yeah. and we know this thing isn't. Yeah. You know, and and it's not really. It's sort of a high tech play, but it's not really a tech play. I mean, these guys have salespeople all across the country it's very touch based you know very high yeah. people you know need here and it's yeah. essentially emails really you know it's reminders coming yeah. out to you saying hey we got a deal it's not not a whole lot of technology here and the thing is is like that type of uh, threshold to get in is very low i mean we're seeing everyone get into this space now google just announced uh di- whatever discount coupons or whatever it is right, um right. every everyone's doing this right <laughs> um um so yeah I don't know. We'll I mean, see. Facebook tried it for a while, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. but uh, living you know, social, I, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, living social is, you know, actually, living social is kind of interesting. They they said that they would delay their IPO, but now with Groupon going in like mm. this, I think that they're going to have to rethink that yeah. strategy yeah, a little yeah. bit. Um, but we'll put a related article there um, on, on our on our website uh, from TechCrunch because they were the, the writer at TechCrunch kind of kind of summed up the. Um, the business plays of Groupon fairly mm. well, and it was kind of kind of interesting. He basically called Groupon a a loan sharking business. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people are saying Ponzi potentially. Yeah. <laughs> so. So what's this about the long-term failure of web, web APIs? What's going on yeah, there? Yeah, so Nick Bradbury in his uh, blog wrote about the, the long-term failures of a uh, web API. So he's saying like years ago he used to write, uh, uh, a, a, you know, OS specific uh, write for OS specific uh, operating system specific APIs as opposed to web APIs, right? So the panacea was like, oh great, we can go to web APIs and we don't have to. It's just one sort of thing we don't have to worry about. We believe in doing hmm. so would empower our software and save it from from the confines of the desktop is what he was saying. Uh, and they were right, right, to some extent. Uh, but mm-hmm. the problem with what he's is that the expiration date of, of software that they create has been shortened due to the whims of those who create the web APIs that, they, that de- web developers rely on. Um, wow. So when he's saying that he wrote the first version of HomeSight, and my heart flutters every time I hear HomeSight because I wrote thousands of lines of code with with HomeSight way back in the day. Oh, nice. Um, nice. But back in 94, and 17 years later, he can still run it on his latest version of Windows is what he's saying with this, uh, you know, this OS application that he wrote, right? Um, and, Interesting. And, uh, but he created Feed Demon. Uh, 1.0 in 2003, and it was uh, the first app uh, that he wrote that relied on web APIs. Uh, mm-hmm. Now those APIs are, no longer exist, and almost every version of Feed Demon Sense has required a massive changes due to uh, shifting sands of uh, the web APIs that he relied on. Right, and this is a common problem. Uh, so you might think you're immune to this problem if you only uh, integrate with the the big API like developers, right, or right. platforms such as right. Twitter, Facebook, and right. Google. Uh, right, right, but right. in recent re- years, they've seen um, Twitter s- switch uh, to a new authentication system. Facebook deprecated FBML. <laughs> And Google discontinued right, right, several right. APIs, you know, there's all these cost-cutting right. things that Google's done. Um, all these changes have broken or will break existing applications. Uh, the end result is that developers are spending more time upgrading their software to ensure uh, that it continues to work with web ATI- APIs they've created with and less time adding the features and refinements that they would uh, that would really benefit us, the customers, right? So right. that's the right. argument there. Um, what what it's looking like uh, is starting to happen is that there's this intermediary layer now. There's there's these big sort of houses coming in saying, uh, if they change your API or they kill it, we'll still support. We'll do backwards support for for these APIs, wow. and your application will really? sort of live on for a cost, right? So it's like that. Yeah. And there are pros and cons to that, right? The pros are that you're you know you have legacy support to some extent who knows what that means uh, the cons is who knows what that means and you have possibly one giant company controlling 
all of it, right? Saying you're at the mercy of, of them. Oh, man. Well, I, I've always been a firm believer of, uh, you know, obviously products supporting legacy to a certain degree, mm -hmm. right? I mean, um, I worked as a product manager, and so a lot of my thinking was, okay, how how does this new product also either – uh, cannibalize the previous product or how does it work with the previous product? I right. always had to kind of think about that. But, you know, it, it is interesting with this kind of fast lane web API stuff coming on. Yeah. I don't know if product managers are really thinking more about that, but for the more of the future stuff, okay, this is what we could do with this new greatest thing. Mm -hmm. And okay, yeah, yeah, I guess we have some problems with the legacy stuff, but I ah, don't worry about it. And we yeah. got some, we got some developers that'll go fix it. You know, I mean, so, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if they're exactly saying that, but it, it sure seems that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, from 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 my standpoint, I mean, uh, what what do you think? Uh, there's a lot of money to be made in APIs, you know. Also, uh, <laughs> and I will talk. And there's a lot of exciting development also in APIs. This was sort of his take on it, and it's one of the the pain points, you know, of uh, of developing for for web APIs, you know, kind of thing. But uh, as we speak, there are technologies being developed to address all kinds of stuff with web APIs. So we will see how this technology progresses, some of which we'll talk about later uh, of things coming up. Uh, but okay. uh, let's move on to CIA. Vengeful librarians monitor up to 5 million overseas <laughs> tweets per oh, this day. Is, this was so cool when I came across this the other day. Um, so uh, the Washington Post, um, or it was AP, AP exclusive on the Washington Post, uh, you know, um, had an article about um, you know, one of their writers had gone into the CIA's operations and uh, called the Open Source Center. And so, and, oh, wow. and they, a team also known as the Vengeful Librarians analyze up to wow. five million tweets a day to gauge public opinion around the world. Now, this is external to the U.S., so don't get worried, everyone, but hmm. let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, the group also examines uh, messages shared via Facebook and comments made in the Internet chat rooms, uh, in addition to listening to more traditional forms of information like hmm. TV, news channels, local radios. I mean, you, you've seen all the CIA-type movies of these monitoring centers mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, social media now is so open, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, allows itself to be a conduit for monitoring like that. I mean, it, it's, you know, the Internet's like the radio waves, right? Sure. So, yeah. um, another thing that um, some of the writers online were, uh, were talking about this after this first article came out this last week was really, you know, they think, and, and it's probably true, that they think that a lot of people like Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, have these APIs that the government could actually use for surveillance if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, no one really talks about that, obviously, but um, a lot of the people talk about trying to understand is is that really happening? I mean, it, it, make, it makes you think about this, right? I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. are they monitoring? you know, uh, our conversation talking about this, you yeah, know, yeah. in fact, I think I got followed by the Vengeful librarians over the weekend after I <laughs> tweeted that out. I was, oh, wow. I was just like, yeah, it was kind of weird. I was going like, well, no, this can't yeah, be the yeah, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. well, can't be the guys, but it was like, wow. Yeah. You know, so, so well, anyway, yeah, we're I mean, all being watched, you know, it's a uh, Patriot act. So <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, that was, Hey man, how was, was a, uh, uh, SF Japan night? Oh, that was so cool. Um, so, yeah, we had um, six startups from Japan come over. Really interesting um, yeah. startups. The, um, the, the, you know, we, we, you know, we did the typical SF New Tech thing, um, five minutes pitch, five minutes QA. Mm -hmm. All six of these companies did it. And then at the end of the night, um, the fans around the world, as, as mm -hmm. well as Mighty, were able to vote through JetJaw.com. That's right. Um, they're, their uh, uh, poll taking uh, device for um, you know gauging reactions for uh, from the audience and sure. um, number one was face match which was a uh, uh, basically it's a app so you could find uh, uh, like your soulmate on Facebook. Mm. <laughs> it's mm. it's mad. It's <laughs> FacebookMatch.com. Uh, that's a, that's the best way I could describe it, guys. All right. So uh, guys and girls and yeah, yeah. whoever else. Yeah. So that that was kind of interesting. Cool. Um, and um yeah we got and, i know, actually was... profiled some of these other ones just to let some of you people know on nerdstalker.com we i've done a mm -hmm. breakdown of uh some of these uh uh 
Japanese startups that presented at uh, SF New Tech that night. So check it out. A yeah, little plug. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> go ahead. Appreciate that. Yeah. So um, that same day, you, I, I heard, I saw many tweets mm. from you at, from GeoLoco. That's What's right, the, right. What, GeoLoco was the the. Uh, you could go to GeoLoco TV and find out what it's about, but you should probably just go to NerdStalker. So my tip uh, actually for GeoLoco, which is a geolocation conference. Uh, there were a lot of advertising people there, obviously lots of sales and marketing people there because they want to know how do we make money on this, you know, on knowing where you are and uh, all that type of stuff. Um, and I actually have slowly been posting some of the audio for free from some of the sessions on nerdstalker.com. So that's my tip nice. to you. Go check it out. This is like, you know, like a $500 plus conference and I'm giving you this content effectively for free, some of it. So go check it out. And a lot of discussions were really good. Um, Dana Oshiro from Read Write Web, uh, she uh, moderated a great panel uh, on why uh, Daily Deal suck kind of thing. And um, wow. there was this, uh, one of the guys from, oh God, who, I forget the name of the the company, the startup. Uh, but what they've done effectively is they've put transmitters in every single retail store or as many as they can. And uh, if you have this application, uh, I forget what it's called, and and uh, walk into the store or walk by or something, it triggers uh, this application on your phone saying, hey, Greg, we noticed that you're walking by, I don't know, uh, BevMo, right? Come on in and we'll give you 50% off or something like that, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's very targeted kind of thing. What was really interesting is they said with that application, um, it's been 40%, um, it's, it's been successful 40% of the time. Uh, the majority of users are female actually and they've convert they've uh of 40 percent of those users have actually went into the store right and 20 percent of that 40 percent have actually converted so that means they've actually made a purchase due to that so that's you know that's quite a bit uh additional revenue for uh, you know these stores so they're motivated now by this type of thing uh, that's just one little example of geolocation there's all kinds of technology here but uh check it out in and uh look for geoloco you know and you'll find some stuff. Nice. Nice. Good job. Good job, my cool. friend. And so your wow. review of the week, Greg. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So I, I sat down was it with tip my of the week? Android. What are we doing? <laughs> well, it's a re my product review of the week. Um, okay. I decided to look at uh, Siri-like apps on uh, yes. Android. Uh, so, yes. so I looked at two, um, one from a company called Iris mm -hmm. um, or an app called Iris, and okay. then the second, uh, Speak to its assistant. Mm -hmm. So um, I have an audio tape of what I did, and you could hear the voices from each of those apps as I asked some basic questions. I asked about five basic questions, something that you would do on an everyday thing um, on your cell phone from – where is something to what is my schedule and, cool. and it's interesting you'll you'll hear my you'll see its responses it, you know it's it's just like a lot of the things that people are doing with Siri a lot of the jokes that are going yeah. on with that um, you know it, it, it's an emerging technology that's all I have to say but yeah, some sure. of it does work in, and some of it integrates fairly well as, as you'll see on my report so mm -hmm. catch that on the uh, nerd stalker I'll send that mp3 up to you or you can awesome. link back to me on my website or whatever great um, and then my tip of the week um, there was a leak and look for this over the holidays hopefully they'll release this before Christmas but uh, Belkin uh, that's a famous brand that you know, if you go to Best Buy, you'll see Belkin products all over the place. They're, they're really great in computer accessories, right? Um, it looks like um, because they have to submit certain things to the FCC for testing mm -hmm. and for validation, uh, for licensing, uh, it looks like Belkin's going to have an iPhone camera remote, uh, wow. which – if you think about that, I, I thought about this a couple of days ago when I was taking pictures of a group. Mm -hmm. It would be great to like put my my phone on a stand, stand with the group, and yeah. say, "Okay, yeah. you know." Uh, otherwise, yeah. it's a typical camera thing where you know, "Okay, five seconds, yeah, come yeah. on, rush, <laughs> you know, Run, get, yeah. get in your places." When's anyway. uh, the next uh, SF New Tech? Hey, we got that on the 15th, bro, and uh, man, I'm all event out after this week, and I'm oh, man, finally recovering, and <laughs> yeah. I have another one in a couple Jumping weeks. right so. into it, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, another API week at yeah. sfnewtech.com for right. tickets, or you could just go to the website and watch it on, uh, on Ustream. So we'll yeah. be Ustream. So if you're not in San Francisco, check it out. Go to sfnewtech.com forward slash live, and you can watch it uh, live stream. 
don't forget, people, too, if you want to contribute to Nerdstalker, our podcast, and uh, weekly tech roundup here uh, on Twitter, any of the stories, just tag it with a uh, hashtag NRDSTK. That is N-R-D-S-T-K, as in Nerdstalker. And uh, we will add it. All right. Um, I'm Greg Valoria at Social Greg. You can reach me at, at Social Greg or on uh, email by uh, socialgregsf at gmail.com. All right. And you? I am Adolfo Ferranda. You can email me at Adolfo at nerdstalker.com or catch me on Twitter at nerdstalker. And uh, I would love to hear from you. Thanks. All right. All right. Be careful out there. <laughs>